Hello, this is Max Strike. I just want to talk a little bit further about this particular app that I've been developing. And uh, a couple of features that have come out, first of all, is um, I did a bit of thing where I overlaid, I went, I was doing the same walk and I just did another test on the thing. So I've actually got the first walk that I've did called Town Boat 1 and the second one called Town Boat 2. Um, and uh, so what actually happens is that I suddenly get all these markers just overlaying each other, so there's just a total scramble. So I say, thought, oh, I'll just get myself another um, uh, pin. So I found a little icon thing to put in, and it didn't work. It actually comes in there, but it I can't differentiate, put one as red and one as blue or something like that. But what I did find with this really cool feature, which is the filter, and if I filter by location, bang, uh, town bit one, I actually just get the first walk that I did. So that's given me the pins from that. And then if I just go through, I can actually then filter out by uh, the second walk that I've done through there. And then if I click on one of those, I'm getting some data on that particular one there. Uh, the third one that I'm just going to tick through here, I'm just going to do that and then I'm going to do that. And this is one which is um, just some test data through here. But one of the things I want to point out here is that it's actually got the date and the time on there. So that was another thing that I was adding through. And what I thought would be quite simple ended up being a little bit more complex than what it is. Now, if people are going down this path, they're most probably doing it for something like a fitness app or they want to get their specific information and manipulate it in some way to display. And so I think the timing thing is worth talking about at this point in time. But let's just step back one point. What we're actually doing is we're using this MIT app, and I'll just go over to here at the moment, and we're sending information to a Google Sheet. Now, the way that we're sending it to the Google Sheet is via um, publish as a web app, and then it needs a little bit of calculation through here to then say it goes to this web app, which basically is this lot compiled, and then it just goes through and pushes it onto um, my uh, form through here and it drops those lines in so it's making a new array it just looks and sees how many lines it's got down there and it adds another line under so that's what we're using so we're using the process of web app but there is an alternative way to do it now this video and there's a few more out there that actually says from app inventor 2 to google sheets is you, you can do uh you, you know generally there seems to be this method and the second method is via google forms so instead of actually sending it to a compiled um, the whatever we do when we publish and we deploy to the web app and getting this URL, what we would do is that we would go into here, we would go uh, insert, oh sorry, there's a, somewhere along here, there's a tools of create a form. So you create a form and then you get the forms URL, you fill, fill, fill in the, you know, on this particular one that we're using, um, where am I now? I'm actually going to have one, two, three, four, five rows of information. So in my form, I'd actually have five rows of information through here. And then when that sends it through to the other end, one of the things which is the form, uh, nature of the form, is that it also gives a timestamp. So automatically, when it's filling out that form and sending that form through, it's doing it. So instead of actually fiddling around with web apps and all of those sorts of things and fiddling around with this bit of code through here, a more simple process may be to think about using the form. Now me, I quite like the, the little bit of coding through here and I prefer to use this method myself because this just gets compiled and so it's actually just going from App Inventor directly to Google Sheets. With the other one, uh, it's going from App Inventor through to Google Forms and then through to Google Sheets. So it, it's just a, a slightly different path. But it does have some benefits. And one of the benefits is it automatically gives you a timestamp. And it just means that your cells are going to start from 2, uh, B, C, D. It's not big as A is going to be your timestamp. So, okay, so that's an easy way of doing it. What's, uh, what's actually happening that we do? So what we actually do in here is that we actually go into sensors and we drag down a clock. So we add a clock to our thing. And then when we come into our blocks, if we look down on what clock does, 
Clock is as intimidating as hell. It's got all of these things. Days, hours, minutes, months, seconds, weeks, years. Um, uh, formatting all of these sorts of things. And when I was actually looking at videos on App Inventor and times and stuff like that and pushing times, it was scary. Very, very confusing. It just looked complicated as hell. Uh, but I found right at the bottom this one here called Clocks One. And I thought, oh, I'll just plug that into there and it do it. But the app broke. It wouldn't work at all. So I thought, that isn't working at all. So anyway, I found this article on here, which is very interesting. And it says, App Inventor, how to insert date time into Google Spreadsheets and shown only recent date time. Now, if we come down to the bottom here and look at this particular thing here, uh, you see there's a very interesting one to generate the number star AA's millisecond function now both Google Sheets and AI use milliseconds but they have a different zero point so you have to manipulate the result a bit the formula I've used in AI in the past is this clock one get milliseconds and inside that clock one now divide by 84 86 million four hundred thousand plus 25,569 so you go, Ugh, but it's actually just a formula, so that's all right. So that's fine. We can actually just do that straight away. So that's what I've actually done in my thing. I've come in. I've sent that across. So inside App Inventor through there, I've um, just got my new item. I've got that one through there. I've actually had to go back into um, here, add the other parameter on, add the other parameter here for the sheet append row, recompile that through the publishers of deploy and uh, do a new update to make sure there's a new revision on there, cut and paste that code there into there so that we have the latest code for our web app going through. And then from there, when we come into um, uh, Google Sheets, we then have this. So we take this one here and then we manipulate this. So if we just go and look at this one up here and go here, you'll see here's the um, the actual item that we actually have. Then we've got these two factors that we've got to divide that by that and then we've got to add that afterwards. So here we're doing the dividing and here we're doing the adding. So we then manipulate that. But after doing that, we then have to format that column into a date time format. So uh, when we come into here, if we actually just have that as formatted as to a number, doo -doo 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 -doo, it's just going to give us another number. But that's the date time format that we lose in milliseconds, which you need for Google Sheets. So we now have that in that format, and then we can convert that number into... Do, 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 do. Uh, where are we? Date time. So we have the date time. So when we actually end up with all of our data through here, now we've got the date time because we know underneath there's just a number. We can actually just do equals this minus the. Actually, I'm going to do it somewhere else. And it doesn't seem to like coming out of that when it's doing that. So I'm going to do it over here. It's going to be equals this because I've been manipulating these before. Um, and it. Oh. Yeah, and it's just come out as, as another number. Now, because that's a duration, we can now format that as a duration. So it is five seconds between me to pressing these two buttons. So this is what we could do through here. We can get our date time through here, and we can just subtract our first, uh, our first from the last, and then whatever the result is, we'll save it as a duration. Because if we don't save that as a duration, if we change that as a date time, it gets all confused. It does something silly. So just be aware that, you know, that I must admit, I, I used to, with other Glide apps, I've actually had a few issues with um, uh, the time, uh, date time issue of, um, uh, of, uh, of Google Sheets anyway. So that's how you do it. So just be aware that you actually need those functions through there. Oh, sorry, those numbers. Um, through there to actually be able to, to alter what you're getting through in their milliseconds into the milliseconds that these ones need and then reformat as you actually need. It's, 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 it's not rocket science, um, but the processing is 
slightly different. So that's why I've done the video on this because it, it, it most probably catch a lot of people out and get them quite frustrated. So it's there, it's been usable. That's the process that you'd use. And the nice thing with this is again, you know, in the background, you mess around with this in your data in sheet. So where you're actually pulling the data in, you do your messing around through here. And when you came to your um, actual uh, displaying it in your, uh, your your glide app sheet you'd actually have it nice and clean so when you come into here it's reading now you see here this did this before um, you see it's come in like that now if I just do a refresh you'll see this will reorder itself and come back as a proper date time so there's something with the app and uh, I don't know if I'm playing with them or whatever they actually confuses it sometimes so it does do that so don't freak out if it suddenly starts just giving you a string of numbers instead of the actual date time as well anyway i hope that's been of interest to you if it has can you please give a thumbs up if not panyaha